Hello, my friends. Sleepy Reader here on my comic book lunch break. I have, I'm have i working at home still, so I have enough time to walk to my really nearby comic book store, pick up my haul, pick up my weekly poll list and a few other things, come back home and make this video for you. This time I'm going to make it a little bit of a vlog, too. Um, hopefully I can throw out a few vlog subjects and not spend too much time on them and then show you what I what I picked up this week. <coughs> First off, <laughs> I'm in the funny position of kind of wishing I hadn't done my last video, the one about Orson Scott Card and Superman. Um, just because I, I have trouble dealing with all the responses to it. I wasn't thinking when I put it up, let's say. Um, I had a little discussion with Travis. Uh, we chatted a bit about it, how uh, maybe religion and politics is best left untalked about, not only at the workplace, but maybe on YouTube. At least for me it is. Um, I have sympathy with a lot of different points of view in a way, and I have my own views, and I don't mean to push them on other people um, or feel like I'm arguing with other people about them. So <coughs> I'm not big and I have political and personal views about lots of things, but I'm not big into trying to uh, debate them with other people. Um, and I got a lot of nice comments. No one was mean or anything, but I still struggled with, I, I answered everyone, but I struggled with how to answer them and felt bad in a number of ways. And then I saw some more articles by Orson Scott Card um, one from 1990 and one from 2004, both of which I found kind of distasteful. Um, so it makes me like him less. Uh, I still, my basic idea I still stand by. Um, it's, uh, it's funny because I believe he's only co-writing like one or two issues of the digital first uh, Adventures of Superman. Um, so his role is pretty small. Probably someone else is scripting and he's helping with the plot, would be my guess, and lending his name and getting to fill whatever childhood fantasy he might have had about writing Superman. Um, if you're really into boycotting publishers, go after his book publishers and the movie studios that are backing a movie by him. I believe that the book publishers are Tor and St. Martin's. Um, but I don't really condone that either. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, the reason I did that video was as a response to bat what I thought were bad journalistic uh, bad journalistic practices of people just repeating a lobby group spin on a person uh, without doing their own research um, and repeating that spin as if it were the known facts. Period. Um, and even though I've read some bad articles now written by Card. I don't know how big of a part of his thinking those are and, and whether he would stand by those articles now. Um, but they were they were disturbing. Um, oh, shoot, I've forgotten his name. Uh, oh, The Real Amos did a nice video on this same subject where he suggested that the best approach to someone like Orson Scott Card, if you disagree with him, um, is shaming bring his words and what appears to be his position, what he's stated, out into the open and let everyone see it. And I think that might be very effective. He might be happy saying these kind of extreme things when he thinks he's talking to a smaller audience of sympathetic, like-minded people. And if he realizes that everyone he knows is going to hear him saying these things, and everywhere he goes, people are going to know he said these things. He might watch what he says some more and think about it a little more. Um, you know, in high school, I said a lot of homophobic things, which I was just being a clueless teenager and no doubt uh, added to some people's difficulties in life. But I was not thinking about it, and I was um, not truly believing what I said, except that I'd never even thought about what I'd said as a teenager. Just you know, being a silly teenager. So um, it's possible, you know, with some people. I think that sometimes works with uh, fighting racism to uh, expose to a broader audience what people are saying, and then they really regret it. And um, and in the long run, that helps move move things forward. 
Um, so yeah, that's, it's hard to know what to say after that. A while back, I really liked a, a vlog by um, Scott Costin Brownstar, uh, where he talked about community and how good this community is and everything. And for me, I think part of it is, I mean, Obviously, a lot of kind of good people are drawn to this, and we have this thing in common that that gives us gives us a base that we don't have e with people that we meet in real life, in a sense. Um, but another, to me, another wonderful thing about YouTube, and partially because of my lifestyle right now, is that it's friends when you have time to be friends. Uh, there's no demands. I can put up a video when I want. I can watch people's videos when I have time. Um, there's no commitment. <laughs> but I'm happily committed when I have time. Um, uh, watching as many videos as I can, making videos when I can. Um, and this just feels more comfortable. Um, and any other kinds of friendships come with strings attached at some point. Um, and and that's not to say that I wouldn't want to meet people in person, although the fantasy of a large group of us coming together doesn't turn me on a whole lot. I'd rather meet people individually or in small groups. Um, but one thing that this YouTube community has is it's a party where everyone gets their chance to talk. Um, you can be in groups of people. Sometimes if I talk a lot, then I realize I've left some people out. Or in some groups, I just hold back and I don't talk very much. And I feel like no one knows what I think on a subject. Um, and they're just all pleased by what they've said. Um, so here we get, we everyone gets equal time. <coughs> I wanted to mention um, a new YouTuber uh, that people are probably starting to discover. Uh, Spiro, Spiro Harvey. I want to say Spiro Henry. Spiro Harvey. And he's already... It's pretty amazing. He started a sort of database list that we can all go to, to of, of who are the members of the community. And there's some gray areas there. But and another great thing about uh, Spiro is he's open to you sending him suggestions. He's fairly new. Um, so if you look at his, his list and uh, see some people who he's missed, you just send him an email or a PM and let him know. So he's a great addition to the community, um, and I love listening to his rambles on, on comic books also. And uh, someone who I, who isn't that new but I missed and just discovered was Jason Ar Ardrun, pardon me if I mispronounced your last name, uh, who does a lot of fun videos, um, review videos basically, and, and I'm enjoying those a lot. Um, and there's lots of other people. I just wanted to mention those too right now. Um, <coughs> I was kind of excited about the Green Lantern news. I may be adding a bunch of Green Lanterns to my pull list. Um, I've been reading Green Lantern in trade, um, but I'm kind of excited to see what Robert Vendetti will do on the main Green Lantern title. And... Um, Joshua Hale Fialkov of iVampire fame is going to be doing two Green Lantern titles, and very interestingly, the Red Lanterns. I really want to see what he'll do on the Red Lanterns, because that seems almost like a horror comic anyway. Um, so since he did such a great job on a horror comic, um, it could be a lot of fun seeing what he does on Red Lantern. So that's, that's really good news in my book. The only bad news is that... Uh, Shortly, Peter Milligan won't be on any books, and he was doing a good job on Red Lanterns and doing a great job on Stormwatch, um, but hopefully he'll pop up elsewhere. I know he is doing one Legends of the Dark Knight arc, um, you know, the digital first Batman, so that's good. So what did I get this week? I only had four books on my pull, so I picked up a number of other things, and I grabbed... Legion of Superheroes, which I haven't been reading except for the Zero issue, which I didn't like. Um, but what attracted me here is the art is by K. 
Keith Giffen and Scott Kolbish in their um, in their proto Jack Kirby, not proto, but um, post Jack Kirby mode, the same kind of art style they used in OMAC. So I'm really craving that. I thought they did a really good job as Kirby imitators um, and added a little something of their own to it. So um, I'll probably get, uh, assuming this is even semi-readable, I'll probably get these as long as they're doing the artwork that way. And just for the fun of it, I picked up Supergirl. I pick up Supergirl every now and then and just don't quite get onto it, but it looked like it would be fun to see her dueling with Wonder Woman. So I thought I'd give that a try. Vibe number one. Um, I read something about it online that made me want to give it a try. Oh, that his powers may come from boom tubes. That that might be fun. That might be cool. So I wanted to check that out. This one, Arsenal. I think he's a character from the Suicide Squad. I know nothing about him. But I loved this cover, so I just grabbed it. And I've heard really negative and really positive reviews of Katana 1. This is from last week, but I decided to pick it up this week um, to see <coughs> to see what I think of myself. I love this cover. I love the, I like the character Katana, the whole husband, soul, and their sword and stuff. Um, but I've always heard bad things about Anne Nicosenti, Nicenti, Anne Nicenti's writing. Um, and I kind of associate her with 90s comics, but um, I'll give it a try. And Fatal, which was supposed to be on my pull list and then sold out and was not in my subscription box last week, came in again at my store, so I picked that up. I now am switching Fatal, at least for now, over into comics rather than trades. And then from my pull... Uh, my beloved Daredevil. Hopefully this continues to be great. Saga. I'm sure it'll continue to be great. I, it's hard to imagine it not. <coughs> Fables, which I'm way behind on reading. I'm getting at my pull, but I haven't read very many issues lately. And Wonder Woman, who I'm a little worried about. A little, uh, the issues have still been good, but they haven't been as great as they used to be. Um, story stretching out. The character of Orion that was introduced was not particularly compelling. Um, still, every issue has some cool aspects, but I hope it starts coming together more as a story. Um, I am kind of looking for books to drop, and it's hard. I actually just added some books. I added um, the upcoming East is West to my pull list. Or sorry, East of West? Or West of East? East of West. Um, which is a new Jonathan Hickman science fiction book that's coming out. <coughs> and I can't remember the name of it, but the new Mark Millar, Frank Quietly comic book I added to my list also. So it should be interesting to see how those are. Anyway, my lunch break is almost over. Happy Wednesday to everybody, and I'll be watching your videos.